I would really like to see Barefoot and Independent monetized and back on their grind. Don't don't use any of this, man. What am I saying? It's 2.39 in the a.m. I have to wake up soon. 2.39 in the a.m. I have to wake up soon. Episode 60. I shouldn't post this. How are you? Did you hear we got demonetized for the third time? That's not cool. I have a VHS shirt on. I have a VHS shirt on. It's too stiff. I better just slicken it up and it'll... Our love for this week is this. What it sounds like to be a young girl interviewing Mike Patton. You know, rated G album. It's a moment. My hate for this week is Pete Holmes. Wait, wait, what? Music. Our song of the week is April the 6th, 2005. That's the song of the day. Take it or leave it. And our subscriber of the week is Scooped Mids. We had a segment on the Christmas episode called Corrections and Omissions. You better fix this shit right now! Corrections and Omissions. Can I give you one right now so my little brother will get off my back? Chalky full of bourbon. Everyone knows it's the opening of Down by Law. It's a million and a drop dead suit. Down by Law. One of his best performances. But I wasn't, there's so much Jim Jarmish, there's Down by Law. And then, the same character in Down by Law, played by Tom Waits, Mystery Train. In Mystery Train, he's the same character that he was in Down by Law, just over the radio. Isn't that awesome? I love the 90s. And then Night on Earth, thank you, Tom, for the film score. There's so many... So that's what? Down by Law, Night on Earth, Mystery Train, Coffee and Cigarettes, the new zombie film, which I haven't seen, so I'm not even going to front. I don't even know what it's called, so you can take my word for it that I don't know. Anyways, they're synonymous. Cut to that famous picture of them sitting where Tom Waits is like super uh, leg crossed. Those guys are so awesome. I digress. Now I'm getting off on a tangent because my brother got in my head. No, I'm not here to talk about Tom Waits and Jim Jarmusch. Well, I guess kind of I am. <laughs> Jeez Louise. We're here to talk about Jockey Full of Bourbon. When I was on tape saying, oh, um, was it, didn't I just hear this in a movie? So my brother's like that home screaming at his television set saying, down by law, down by law. No shit, Ryda. I know that everyone knows the Jockey Full of Bourbon is the, that's how everyone first heard that song. And it's just like the best opening, black and white. I wasn't talking about all the uses of Jockey Full of Bourbon. I was literally saying, I just watched a movie the other day and this was in it. But I was right. I was right in my thinking because my thinking wasn't, Talk about the opening credits of of Down by Law, which is Tom Waits and Jockey Full of Bourbon. No, it's not what I was talking about. I was talking about I just saw it in a fucking movie and I was right. Things to do in Denver when you're dead. It's the opening credits. That is fucked up. If some amazing film opens with a certain song, then it's been done. You can't do it. You can maybe use that song in a different scene in your movie, I probably wouldn't, but that's okay. But you can't open your film with it because that's a song that's been known for opening with it. It's a million and a drop dead suit. It makes no fucking sense. Shame on whoever made things to do in your Denver when you're dead. And the whole genre, the post pulp fiction genre. Shame on all of you. That is so weird. I'm going for originality. Are you? Are you? Because you're ripping off QT and you're ripping off JJ. I've never called him JJ before. I've worked with Jim Jarmusch. My first professional gig ever. It was the first gig before I talked about last week, the soft bulletin with flaming lips. It was the gig right before it. My first job out of film school and my second job out of film school. And look at me now. A re <laughs> piece of shit. Fat, ugly, dumb, broke, worthless. But back then, but back then, I was like, is this what my life is going to be like? Goal? I don't have any goals. What am I saying? I worked on Ghost Dog, which is Jim Jarmusch, press kit stuff. My first job ever was editing the RZA of the Wu-Tang Clan. I got to cut up the RZA. 
I also did um, Forrest Whitaker, but Kevin Robinson, who was the head of the editing room, I was second. He got first choice, and so he picked Jim. He we got we got footage sent to us. Raw footage of just a flat interview, no camera movements, just locked down. One of Jim, one of Reza, one of Forrest Whitaker. What am I talking about? What am I saying? I'm so fucking tired and I'm so demonetized that I don't even care. My hate for this week, let's just jump into this really quick because it's easy. Pete Holmes, when we first started The Love and the Hate, episode 2, this is episode 60, so 58 episodes ago... The first love ever was Pete Holmes. Now he's got himself a slot in the hate. I want to jump out of my fucking skin and hopefully I don't have to explain this to you. Hopefully you just know what I mean and hopefully you just get it. But he was talking about the homeless population and he fucking SJWs can't say homeless anymore. I just said retarded like a two minutes ago. Sorry, I know people don't like that. I've actually made more than one video on it because we're supposed to say frittata. Say frittata. The R word hurts people. What is wrong with me? The R word hurts people's feelings. And here I am just willy nilly busting it out. I'm talking about myself. So sorry that I used a word you don't like. Go talk to Pete Holmes about it because. The unhomed. Oh, the unhomed? The fucking unhomed? The unhomed. Really? You got so mystical in your new... Enough. I'm not even going to go into it. Shame on you. Dumb. I understand the reason why not saying things and changing things and adapting. Oh, no, no, but some things are just too far, bro. Bro, 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 bro. Oh, yeah, no, I zoom House music all night long. Was that offensive? <laughs> that was really in bad taste. Let's do song of the week. Okay, so back in 2005, the Mike Patton band Phantomus, they scored the month of April. You heard that right. Some people score films. I've had one profit organization score my yard sale. This band, they scored April. There's a song for every day. I was born in April, not April 6th. The whole album's amazing. Just count your blessings. You don't have to be born in April. Just listen to it. Best cover art ever packaging box and all that stuff don't you love my david lynch phone it'll turn off in a second <laughs> subscriber of the week is scooped mids <laughs> avant-garde, experimental, alternative, heavy, but above all else, fucking amazing Faith No More. This young man did a Faith No More retrospective. It was pretty fucking good. Oh my God, your Angel Dust segment was almost flawless. You shouldn't really let you... I uh, got some pointers for you. Here I go. Here I am opening my big stupid mouth. But why did you include Easy? Ew. That song's to make love to. So apparently they tacked it on to Angel Dust. I have Angel Dust in my car right now. That's how I fell upon this. Um, other than that, I wish there would have been a little more freestyle. And there was times where I kind of felt like I was his friend. So I would talk to him like a friend. You know how you're kind of mean to your friends? But he kept looking over to the side. As your new friend, what the fuck are you looking at? Like, oh, this is a punk song. This is a metal song. This is a jazz song. This is a lounge song. This is a motherfucking gospel song. With peace and love, I'm just busting your balls. Super talented. Super insightful. I watched the whole thing. One sitting. I wasn't going to turn it off. I, I was intrigued. I was entertained. Two pretty, pretty, two, two pretty damn good things to come from a YouTube video. And I'm very particular with my patent. And uh, you did a good job. So give yourself 
a round of applause. What am I doing? Oh, the love? What is the love? What is love? Oh, so the love is this girl. Fuck. I'm not going to be able to find it. We're just going to burn through tape. It's the video before I found Scooped Mids. So I'm listening to these Angel Dust tracks, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, the making of I've seen this. This is the Mike Patton needs a sandwich, which most people know that. But what I'm in love with has nothing to do with the lure of, of how cool that is. What was I looking for? Can someone tell me? Can someone just f talk to me through here? 21612. Did someone say 21612? Thanks, man. I couldn't tell. I wasn't looking. I, I don't know who said it about you guys. It was probably scooped mids. That dude knows what's up. I bust balls, so I hope uh, I hope you didn't take any of that the bad way. Okay, this is my favorite. This is my love for the week. Mike Patton talks about violent, satanic, easy listening. Easy listening. But it's really violent, satanic, easy listening. And she wants him to say it back because her voice is going to be, her voice is all over the raw footage, but for the interview, it's going to be cut out. Because they won't hear my voice. Mm-hmm. They won't hear the answer either. I forgot. Wait till you swallow. I swallow! I swallow! I swallow! And she just cracks up. She's, 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 so she's refreshing him. Is there going to be any easy listening music on the new uh, Fake No More album? Absolutely. He goes, about what was I going to say? She goes, can you, can you restate that for me? They're going. So we can understand it? <laughs> <laughs> Easy listening, satanic music on the new Faith No More album and her line delivery. She just laughs at the absurdity. What, am, what was I going to say? Easy listening, satanic music on the new Faith No More Oh, yeah. You can hear a few voices behind the camera and everyone, you get the impression that people think he's joking. He's a funny guy. He likes to crack wise. But the funny thing is he was telling the damn truth. I'm only talking about one line of dialogue that she says off camera to Bungle. Easy listening, satanic music on the face no more album. That's my love for this week. Anything else? I have a VHS shirt on and I have no pants and no underwear. So what? So last week I heard I was crazy. Did you guys think it was crazy? Oh, this is an awesome way to end this. This is my new favorite quote. It is from an adult film, which I can't talk. Hey, you're getting your cock sucked, kid. I can't say that. I'm getting it all off my chest. I can't say that in the G-rated porno intros. You're getting your cock sucked, kid. He's looking at you, kid. But Janie Robbins saying, you're getting your cock sucked, kid. She's my favorite. We just did two of her films back to back. The first two of the 101. Summer Camp Girls and Private Teacher. So this new quote, not from either one of those films. This is how I'm summing up my life right now. It's so hard to say I love you when you're sitting on my face. So this is a good one. This is a good one. It's Patton heavy. Is this the Mike Patton episode? All right, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. And for the love of God, please remember everyone, it's hard for someone to tell you that they love you. If you're sitting on their face, Come on, let them talk, let them breathe. That's a two-way street.